Hello, this is Mike Mortson, founder of Supply Chain Game Changer. Welcome to our latest video entitled Supply Chain's Moment of Truth Has Arrived. With the relaxation of many of the protective pandemic protocols, more and more companies, institutions, and people are trying to get back to normal or business as usual. However, this is a moment of truth. We can't go back to business as usual. There have been too many disruptions in every aspect of our lives. The old ways of doing things, particularly in the supply chain, have been exposed as contributing to these disruptions. Still, there are many who will conveniently forget the life-changing experience we have all gone through with the pandemic, and this inertia will inhibit making the improvements necessary in the future. So we will move forward and make changes and improvements, or some of us are going to stagnate and remain stuck in the old ways. This is the most important supply chain question of our time. Supply chain's moment of truth truly has arrived. If we look at the state of the supply chain, uh, the pandemic clearly exposed the fragility of supply chains everywhere. I remember in early 2020 going shopping and seeing people buying huge quantities of toilet paper and wondering what was going on. We were also searching for masks and hand sanitizer, which were in short supply. Store shelves were empty of numerous basic household goods. The news was talking about shortages of ventilators and PPE or personal protective equipment for our healthcare workers, um, the people on the very front line of the battle with the coronavirus. And then shortly thereafter, everything shut down. People were working from home and normally traffic-filled highways were empty. Manufacturing facilities and offices, stores and restaurants, logistics operations were operating at nominal capacity levels, if not closed outright. Just-in-time systems had faltered. Single points of failure in the supply chain were exposed. Think about the Suez Canal blockage as a case in point. The level of disruption continued on, from toilet paper to PPE, household goods, to everything from lumber, fireworks, Christmas trees, semiconductor computer chips, automobiles, and on and on and on. Logistics delays were commonplace. Cargo, cargo ship loading and unloading of ports has been severely backlogged. Truck driver and truck infrastructure shortages compounded these delivery delays. Now, company war rooms, shortage expediting, tweaking parameters, safety stock, upgrading were some of the actions that supply chain leaders were, were uh, undertaking to try and get a handle on the disruptions. They dusted off old dis disaster recovery plans, which proved to be insufficient and inadequate at dealing with this new reality. To make matters worse, the stress and turmoil on workers in coping with the pandemic Followed, resulted in burnout, resignations, inefficiencies, and what I call post-pandemic stress disorder. The pandemic clearly exposed the fragility of supply chains everywhere, in every industry and in every geography. Supply chain design had proven to be not nearly as robust and resilient as they needed to be, bringing us to this moment of truth. Now, the pandemic also brought supply chain into the zeitgeist, the term supply chain management was first coined by Keith Oliver in 1982. Never before in the last 40 years have you heard supply chain used by so many government leaders, corporate leaders, institutions, the media, schools, um, children, and any else, anyone else in society for that matter. Supply chain's profile has been raised by the pandemic, and it's now top of mind for everyone. People who have historically viewed supply chain as merely a back office function should now appreciate that supply chain is actually the very engine that makes most companies, most economies, and much of our personal and professional lives run. The question is, will supply chain still be in the spotlight once we get past the pandemic? <clears throat> With so much attention on and awareness of supply chain, the time has never been better and the motivation never stronger to make the improvements necessary for the future and face our moment of truth. But there is enough inertia, enough people who want to just go back to the old ways and enough resistance to change 
that this opportunity to make changes for the for the better could actually be squandered. Uh, now, supply chains are broken. Denial will impede making the changes needed necessary to make these improvements. This is not just a planning issue. Waiting for good forecasting, if there really is such a thing as good forecasting, is a bad strategy. Supply chains must be designed to handle forecast inaccuracies of all kinds. They must be more res robust and more resilient. Think about all the time and energy and money spent in dealing with issues. Shortages, downtime, resources, process breakdowns, logistics delays, and problems of every kind. These breakdowns extend to virtually all functions in a company, all suppliers to a company, and all customers of a company. At its extreme, companies have gone out of business, never to return because of the failures of supply chain to adapt and to respond. The lack of end-to-end -end real time visibility has been chronic and is a fundamental contributor to the state of disruption and the delay in or lack of responsiveness. It's just like driving in a storm. If you can't see out of the windshield, you have no idea where you are, where you're going, and how you're going to get there. Dismissing the fact that supply chains have been broken and being in denial is the single greatest problem for the future. Some will choose inaction over taking the bold, and courageous and difficult steps needed to make things better in this moment of truth. This recognition is important because there will always be another disaster. Whether natural or man-made, there will be some unpredictable disruptive event on the horizon. And while these disasters may be localized and not as extensive as a global pandemic, they can and will bring your company to its knees just as easily. Now, there are many different uh, both enablers and disablers to the present and the future states. Uh, what we have experienced and what we will experience in the future. Um, what are the dynamics that contributed to the failures uh, in supply chain during the pandemic? It's, it is not conceivable that any supply chain, no matter how well designed and executed, could withstand the devastation caused by a global pandemic. But there are dynamics and realities which weakened, if not crippled, the ability of supply chains to respond better, faster, and more nimbly. And the danger is that if unaddressed, these factors will cripple supply chains well into the future. Interestingly, as I've said, these dynamics are both enablers and disablers. Their absence leads to failures in supply chain performance, whereas their presence maximizes the odds of survival, growth, and success. Let's start with visibility. Without real-time electronic end-to-end -end visibility between a company's customers, uh, internal operations, suppliers at all tiers, and service providers, the impact of the pandemic is like trying to drive in whiteout conditions. It's not possible. An inability to see what's going on means that there's an inability to react and act and make the decisions necessary to mitigate, if not avert, any disastrous consequences. Electronic connectivity. It's no longer good enough to be dealing by phone or by emails. There are far too many parts and materials and suppliers and customers and operations and processes uh, for that to be conceivably managed manually. Electronic connectivity is the foundation of what I call the digital supply chain. Uh, which can be built with real-time information. Without it, we continue to live and operate in the Middle Ages. From skills and leadership, far too many organizations have not recognized supply chain and its value, certainly prior to the pandemic. Supply chain is the engine that makes most companies run. It touches virtually every function and every stakeholder, unlike any other group. Too many CEOs do not understand this. Too many C-level executives have no or limited supply chain experience. The earth-shattering tremors of the pandemic required real leadership and overall business management skills, not just functional specific skills. But did companies really make the investments necessary to hone and develop these skills? The importance of supply chain management, development, and acquisition and retention has never been more important and apparent. This expertise is in high demand and supply 
unfortunately is constrained here too. Further, the skills required to run a functional back office supply chain are much different than the skills and leadership abilities that we'll need in the future to run a front office supply chain. The ability to lead, envision, strategize, and implement the capabilities needed going forward rests on the shoulders of supply chain professionals. And the skills that are necessary to make this happen in the future are much different than the tactical and technical skills of the past. We need people who know how to do strategic planning and big thinking, uh, uh, people that have applied real-time end-to-end supply chain expertise, technological knowledge and expertise, change leadership skills, control tower leadership skills, a data analytics mindset and mentality, risk management expertise, holistic global leadership skills, business process transformation capabilities, and best practices knowledge. The next enabler or disabler is resilience and robustness. How many, how many companies even had disaster recovery plans before the pandemic, let alone active plans that were gathering dust in the deep recesses of drawers and cabinets? The pandemic and any other disruptive event exposed too many single points of failure. Single sor sourcing, low-cost geography, only sourcing, fragile processes and systems, lack of skills and management and leadership, lack of visibility to second, third, and fourth tier suppliers, congested shipping ports, total cost of ownership models focused largely on price, uh, a lack of strategic inventories, all of these things make our supply chains vulnerable. You cannot rely on good or accurate forecasts. You cannot define responsiveness solely based on lead times. You cannot expect that excessive handling, storage, and movement of goods is anything but wasteful. Supply chains must be designed to be more resilient and robust. Do you need to establish parallel supply chains, for instance? Can you engineer your structure to be more lead time agnostic in its responsiveness? And can you eliminate nodes and middlemen in your logistics nest, uh, network? Disintermediation of supply chains and eliminating waste using what I call a don't touch paradigm can greatly simplify and strengthen supply chains. This is a core aspect in our moment of truth. The next enabler or disabler is really inertia, denial, and the resistance to change. We will get past the pandemic as we are today, but like any other situation commanding change, there are those who will be in denial about the need for change and resist it, either passively or aggressively. This will be the single biggest determinant of future progress or stagnation and reversion to the old ways of doing things. Sacred cows, the status quo, and inertia are enormous blockers for change. Now, change is hard. It takes the investment of time, money, conviction, and an unrelenting drive. The easy thing to do is to do nothing. But doing nothing will make us even more vulnerable in the future. Still, people will be either in denial about the need for change, or they won't have the resolve to make it happen. This is why, uh, as I said, one of the most critical skills for supply chain professionals in the future is change leadership, not change management but change leadership. There is a difference, and it is real. The next enabler disabler is technology. We have, at this point in time, an unprecedented set of technologies available. Blockchain, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, the Internet of Things, big data, predictive analytics, machine learning, cloud computing, control towers, 3D printing, uh, robotics, automatic, uh, aut autonomous vehicles, drones, cybersecurity, and more. There will always be opportunities for further technological improvements and further technologies. Uh, we will have still, surely have a need for standards and standardization to reduce costs. Um, <clears throat> but this technological suite constitutes the core capabilities required to create the uh, electronically connected digital supply chain of the future. This will enable visibility, um, uh, which will further enable intellectual automation and better and more responsive uh, real-time decision-making. 
Um, the inevitable barriers and hurdles still need to be overcome. The inclusion of these technologies and vision strategies and the acceptance of and willingness to invest in this direction will be met with the usual suspects uh, in resisting and denying the need to change. And finally, uh, the last enabler, disabler I want to touch on again is change leadership. Nothing will happen without change leadership as we face our moment of truth. Doesn't matter what the technologies are or what the will is, you need change leadership. Far too many people are just going to go back to the old ways of doing things. No matter how seriously their organization was impacted, denial will be rampant. It takes special skills to be a change leader. At its core, you must be able to will, uh, be willing to change the very culture of an organization to embrace the changes needed. Some people will resist because of the fear of the unknown. Some will resist because they just don't want to change. Everyone, however, must be brought along to make these changes not only work, but to become sustainable. Failure is not an option. A lot of companies failed or will, will only go on to be a shadow of what they used to be because they refuse to make the changes needed to survive and progress. Now, what direction do we take? Um, I believe supply chain is at a crossroads. History will show that this is true. Um, what direction do we take? Um, across a spectrum, we be, believe there's two fundamental choices. Uh, on one end is the status quo. People keep doing things the way they've always done them. Uh, they don't really make much uh, progress at all. Um, and they just kind of plug along. When the next catastrophe or disaster happens, uh, they will just uh, deal with it uh, in a firefighting fighting mode on the other, uh, as they have in the past. Uh, on the other hand is what I call the supply chain renaissance. Similar to what happened in the Middle Ages, there's a confluence of many different dynamics that laid the groundwork um, for phenomenal, for, for centuries of change. Um, and that's what I think we have in front of us uh, in terms of redefining supply chain for decades and decades to come. Um, all the enablers and disablers that we've discussed can be employed uh, in either direction. Um, uh, but there are broken links in the supply chain. Uh, they've been pervasive during the pandemic. Uh, and this, uh, these broken links provide the opportunity to improve and strengthen supply chains and should not be ignored or whisked away. The reality is that once we get past the pandemic, far too many people will have short memories and will revert to their old ways. Progressive, competitive, and serious companies will make the improvements necessary to advance and strengthen their supply chains to create a digital supply chain of the future and to create and embrace a new normal. This is our moment of truth. Now, let me define a little more of what I mean about the supply chain renaissance. Um, I think you're all familiar with uh, the renaissance period uh, in the four, between the 14th and 17th centuries in Europe, uh, a period when uh, dramatic changes, improvements in uh, so many different aspects of our lives were made. Um, you know, one of the definitions of renaissance is a situation or period in time when there's a new interest or something that has not been popular in a long time uh, or a new per a period of new growth of activity or rebirth. Um, the pandemic has created the conditions for and is it is the catalyst for the supply chain renaissance. The conditions that have to be coincident to launch a renaissance um, include the unrelenting, pervasive, unforgiving disruption of supply chains in every company, every industry, and in every country around the world. Um, all of that disruption is the motivation, the inspiration, and catalyst for change. The dynamics uh, to ignite a renaissance are massive failures in the current environment, making the status quo untenable. The creation and awareness of a level of advanced intellectual expertise. Reduced resistance to change and a desire to get back to a more stable condition. 
the availability of new technologies or tools, extensive communication, infor information sharing, and cross-fertilization of ideas, resource availability uh, to fuel innovation and creativity, um, and awareness and recognition by governments, industries, individuals, and society uh, for, of the need to change. Um, all of those conditions exist today as we consider what we've gone through for the pandemic. Um, on top of that, there's what I call um, the art of supply chain management. Uh, running supply chain, supply chain leadership is so much more than just knowing the mechanics of doing the job. You need to have great visioning capability and creativity. You have to be able to think outside the box, be innovative, you have to be brave, uh, and you have to have courage. Uh, all of these are traits of the great Renaissance leaders and change makers throughout history. So in short, all of these conditions exist today, unlike ever before, and they're enabling uh, the supply chain renaissance. Um, now, what, con what do I consider to be a part of the supply chain renaissance? The first would be the digital supply chain, um, which... Uh, as I outlined a lot of the technologies earlier, at its core involves the electronic end-to-end -end connectivity enabling real-time visibility and decision-making along with the capabilities uh, enabled by all the other technologies. The second aspect of a supply chain renaissance is creating more robust and resilient supply chains. Um, we have to be able to withstand disruptions, even just-in-time systems. Uh, which were uh, the, uh, the envy of many, uh, they all failed um, uh, in their current form. Uh, and in the, in the spirit of continuous improvement, uh, we don't have to abandon just-in-time systems, but there are ways to improve them moving forward. The third uh, aspect of the supply chain renaissance is the circular supply chain. We must, have, we must have sustainability and more environmentally friendly and appropriate um, supply chains. Supply chain as, sir, as a service, or SCAAS, is also a core uh, capability. Every company is not going to have the resources to hire all the expertise that they need to be able to uh, advance and make the improvements needed in the future. But they can hire this capability. There's so many companies who are experts in their fields um, that they can bring that expertise and severe, uh, severely leapfrog and advance in a much shorter time uh, the implementation of these improvements in any company. Global holistic leadership. <clears throat> Leaders must be able to see across their entire end-to-end -end supply chain network. They must have the tools like control towers so they can make real-time, end-to-end, informed decisions and take the appropriate risks. Supply chain, unlike ever before, belongs at the head of the table. When we talk about the boardroom or leadership of any company, um, if you don't understand supply chain, you don't really understand how your company runs. And the final uh, element of a supply chain renaissance is technology everywhere. We see it in our lives these days, and it's only going to become more uh, prevalent and pervasive. Um, the, the technological capabilities uh, that are involved in the digital supply chain uh, are the core of a supply chain renaissance. Uh, now, in conclusion, uh, it has never been a more exciting time to be in supply chain now and for literally decades to come. The global need for uh, and the appetite for improvement and innovation, the universe of opportunity, the wealth of technological advancements, and the promise of a better future all make supply chain the place to be. Who knows what great and amazing things our supply chain professionals or you will accomplish. Our future unequivocally will be shaped by the leaders of supply chain. Those who step up will be the stars of tomorrow. Those who revert back to the old ways will be fall by the wayside and be forgotten by history. The eyes of the world are upon us, and history and time will judge whether supply chain stepped up to the challenge and began a new age, a supply chain renaissance. The time is now. 
supply chains moment of truth has arrived thank you so much for your time uh, please be sure to follow us and check out our library of over a thousand articles on supplychaingamechanger.com and uh, have a great day thank you